Welcome to Imagining a Linked List of Strings. I am Seish Venugopal, and this is part of a series of lessons on data structures and algorithms. This lesson follows on the heels of the Imagining a Linked List lesson, which showed how to imagine a linked list of integers, both pictorially and as links of addresses in memory. If you haven't seen that lesson, you may still be able to follow along, and if you run into trouble, you can always return to this lesson after viewing the other one. The picture for a linked list of strings is somewhat more involved than one with integers, because there is yet another level of addressing that is used. That's what we're going to look at in this lesson. But before we begin, let's do a quick recap of a two-node linked list of integers. Here's a linked list containing two integers, 50 and 25, and its memory representation. Let's go over the memory representation in order of traversal through the linked list, starting with front. Note that this order is not necessarily the same as the sequence in which the linked list itself might have been built. So, for instance, node 25 might have been built first, and then node 50 added, or the other way around. In order of traversal through the linked list, we first have the variable front at address 2024. This variable holds the address of the 50 node, which is at address 1984 in memory. Starting at address 1984, the integer 50 occupies the first four bytes, Then, starting at address 1988, is the address of the 25 node, which is 2000. Starting at the address 2000, the integer 25 occupies the first four bytes. The next four bytes, starting at 2004, holds the address 0, for the null pointer, since the 25 node does not have a node after it. Alright, on to a linked list that has string data. The picture for a node that holds a string in its data part is a little different from one that holds an integer. Since strings are objects, the data part holds a reference or pointer to the string object. What we have here is an example of a single node that holds a string Everest. The data part of the node does not itself hold the data, as was the case with integers. Instead, it is a pointer to the Everest object, which is stored elsewhere. This will become clearer when we look at the memory representation of this linked list. The front of the linked list is at the address 1956, which holds the address 2000, the location of the Everest node. At the address 2000, the data part of the node holds the address of a string. We use slanted green lettering for addresses to distinguish them from integer data. The address in the data part is 2032. The next part holds 0, which is a null pointer. At the address 2032 is the string Everest. A string is a Java object that will take up a variable amount of space depending on the length of the string. What is shown here is only the starting address of the Everest string object. The actual number of bytes occupied by the object is not shown and is not required for understanding how a linked list of strings works. Okay, on to an example that takes it to the next level. Here's a linked list that contains three strings. The first node holds a pointer to the string object Everest, the second to the string object Rainier, and the third to the string object Fuji. Let's take a look at the memory representation of this linked list in order of traversal from first to last. The variable front is at address 1956 and it holds the address 2000. 
which is a pointer to the first node. At address 2000, the first four bytes hold the address 2032, pointing to the string object address. At address 2004, which is the second part of the address node, is the address 1972, a pointer to the next node. At the next node, the address 2096 points to the Rainier object, while the address 2016 points to the next node. At the next node, which is the last, the address 2064 is that of the object Fuji, and the address 0 is for the null pointer, which terminates the linked list. I think that's just about enough for this lesson. Make sure you understand how all these pointers slash addresses work together so you can clearly conceptualize how a linked list of strings appears in memory. See you later.